Hey guys, welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I'm gonna talk about blur and how we can use it in an animation. Now this comes from a few questions that I got around how to actually use blur and apply it in different ways. So in this video, I thought it'd be nice if we tied in you know, blur effects to some sort of animation that you could also follow along and make. Now for this, if you wanna follow along exactly with what I'm doing, then these there's some files that you can download. I basically source these from Unsplash. I'll have links down in the description below. You can head over to Unsplash and search for basically whatever free images that you want. These are all free to download, but I will link to the exact ones that I'm using here. I've used some images here of a statue and also this paper background texture. For the statue and the hand image, I did put these into Photoshop and just quickly remove the background. You can use uh, basically the generative AI, which will just remove the background for you, or you could just mask it and cut it out and then I've just saved them as PNGs so they have transparent backgrounds just to save a bit of time. Also, you might not be using those exact same images. Now, what I'm also gonna do is just start by creating a new composition. This can be whatever size you want. I'm just gonna make this about five seconds here. And this can be 1920 by 1080. Then I can just start by dragging in my paper background layer here. And this is, we're just gonna basically use this as a nice sort of texture, as you can see here, to, to, to try and, you know, break up the background a little bit so it's not just on a white solid background. I am gonna create a solid that sits behind that. Now this white color, I'm basically just gonna set it to be a slightly, you know, I don't want a crisp sort of white. I want it maybe a slightly yellow. Mainly because this is what, you know, people like Vox and things like that do. They tend to use, not, not exactly like the solid white, they tend to use a slight off color white or something like that. Once we've kind of got that image, I want to try and make it a little bit more transparent. Now, a simple way we can do that is just basically changing the blending mode to something like overlay or even soft light. Another one that works really well is going to be multiply. A lot of the time, it's just gonna come down to the image that you're using and on how well it's actually gonna blend into that background. But once I have that set to multiply, I'm just gonna scale this down to around sort of 20% here. And that's gonna basically just sort of sink into the background. Could even scale this down more, depending on how much or how little you wanna see of that. Now, what I'm gonna do is then drag in my statue image here. And I'm moving pretty quick through this sort of stuff because I wanna kinda of get to the blur effect. And what I did to this is I added the tint effect. Now, you can come up here and search for tint and just add the tint effect. Now, these are the exact colors that I'm using. I mapped the black to be this sort of, uh, you know, lighter sort of yellow color here. If you change it to black, you just get black and white image. That basically just makes those blacks blend more into the background of our image. It's, it's just another way of doing this without having to sort of make it transparent. We're just trying to create a bit more of a blend between the background. I could also just come back to my background layer here and add a little bit more of that yellow into that which looks kind of nice. Just getting that kind of off white color makes it all just kind of blend nicely together. Now, something else I also added was a drop shadow to this. So you can also come up here, search for drop shadow, add the drop shadow perspective. And to this, I just kind of added a bit of like a, a pinky purple color. And you can just off center this and move it around whichever direction you want. And that's something else that Vox also do in their videos that kind of have these little drop shadows and change the colors of them to kind of, you know, just separate those elements. If you followed my uh, Animation Master course, or you've watched a few of those videos in there, you would have known that I talk a lot about layering. And that's something that Vox do a lot. And also, I'm not just always referring to Vox. I know I focus on Vox a lot, but a lot of those animations that you see online, they're using these sort of principles to kind of, you know, create depth in their animations. If you are new to this channel, or you're new to animation, you can check out my Animation Master course. I'll add a link down in the description. Basically, it's a course which is gonna teach you After Effects from scratch right through to creating all of these sort of animations and effects. I've had a lot of students go through and some students who have never used After 
effects before are getting amazing results at the end. You can check out a bunch of the testimonials by clicking on that link. But really in that, I talk a lot about these principles because it's not just about how to put an image over the top and be like, right, that's where it is placed. You need to kind of understand more about the principles and the techniques that are behind that so that you can kind of take those and incorporate them into your own animations. So if you're interested in learning animation or you want to learn how to make you know maps graphs all of those sort of things then definitely check out my animation master course there'll be a link down in the description i'm also going to add in this hand image here and i want to try and match this also to this effect i much also while i've got this here i'm going to make it a little bit darker more contrast i'm going to copy both of these effects and apply them to that hand image I'm also just going to change the distance on this one and maybe move this one around slightly. And I can also add a little bit more contrast to that one just to try and blend those two together. I'm also just going to add some text in here. Now what I've done for mine, I'm just going to position mine here just so we can see what we're doing. If you come over here to the character menu, these are the exact things that I'm using here. I'm using Baskerville and I'm basically uh, I've used two different types. I've used the regular and then I've used the bold italic to kind of isolate or, you know, really make those different, add different weight to those uh, keywords there. Again, this is something that I talk about in my animation courses, but I'm just going to scale this up slightly and reposition these things. I can also put this text underneath those two layers and then just reposition these here. I also added another line of text just underneath. This can be whatever you like, but just to kind of bring this whole thing together. And to this, I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard and I'm going to basically just add a slight fade transition. And I want this fading on a bit later. So now that I've kind of got that text, I'm just starting to lay out a little bit of animation here. Now with my text, what I'm going to do is come up here and just use the typewriter effect. I'm just going to drag that onto the start there. Hit you to bring up those keyframes, drag these in. And you can also make those easy ease just to kind of smooth out that animation. Maybe extend this out a little bit, move it back. So we kind of get that coming in a little bit later. And what I'm also going to do is hit P on the keyboard and animate the position of this statue coming in. So we kind of get this animation like this, make that easy ease. And I'm also going to turn on motion blur for all of these layers. So we kind of get that nice motion blur effect and also do the same for this one. Create a position keyframe and then with the first one, I'm just going to bring this in sort of on an angle, something like that. Maybe bring this one in after the text. So as the text is basically fading on then that hand sort of moving in over the top there. Now, one of the thing that I can do here is before we move on to the blur, I'm just going to create a new sort of circle here. I'm just going to set this to be solid. And the color, I'm just going to use a bright yellow. I don't want any stroke effect. And I'm just going to draw out roughly a circle or a bit of an oval here. And with that, what I'm also just going to do is select that and hit R and rotate it very slightly. Sort of off center it here, move it down because I want it right in the background and then change the blending mode of that one to be multiply. And I can just scale down the opacity. So if I want to make it less or more, I can sort of scale this down, maybe a little bit more than that. So something around sort of 85, something like that looks good. And I can just reposition here this, you know, scale it up. So now we've got our basic layout. Now I want to add some texture over the top. Now these are the last things that you always add. The blur is obviously what this tutorial is about. I want to get into that in just a second. 
And the other thing is adding in some, you know, texture. Now, one way we can do that is by adding two adjustment layers here. I'm just gonna create two adjustment layers. Now to this bottom one, I'm gonna come up to effect, down to blur and sharpen, and I'm going to add the fast box blur. Is scale this up to around sort of four, scale the iterations down, make sure these are just left on by default. You can sort of adjust the amount of blur that you want. So you can scale this up or down. I reckon around sort of four looks good. And what we wanna do is kind of adjust this just to isolate certain areas. So the way we do this is just by drawing a mask that sort of sits roughly over, like I don't want it to be perfect. And this is part of the look that we're going for. If we come down here and then feather that mask, we can then invert it. And that's gonna create this sort of drop off effect where it sort of looks like it's in focus on one part. And then it's sort of, if we zoom in here, you can see it's kind of dropping off and, and sort of soften that, you know, sort of soften that blur effect, sort of moving off into the rest of the image. So you can then just drag anything above that. So say I didn't want the uh, statue here to have that blur effect, but I can just drag it above that layer. This is a really common way that I've seen animations doing it online. It just looks a lot more interesting when you have that selective blur. It not only draws your viewer's attention to that specific part, but it just kind of, it, it makes that whole layering thing a bit more interesting. So rather than just having, right, your text is, is you know, your background's all blurred and then your text is not blurred, it kind of gives it a much more interesting look and really just kind of softens the whole image together. And when you're looking at that part of just the image, it does draw your eyes in. If I scaled this right up, you can exaggerate that effect more or less, but it also doesn't create those hard edges. So it sort of softens that whole thing out. If we were to do this another way, so say we created a camera and I've talked about this in my Animation Master course, but if we were to create a camera and then we basically would go in here and create under camera options, depth of field, what that does is it creates more planes. So as you're layering your, your different layers in that three dimensional space, it's gonna kind of be much more sort of like the blur is gonna be sort of on or off for a certain layer. And as it comes more into focus, you know, you're gonna get more of that softening effect, but it's not gonna be over a plane unless you start shifting layers in that three dimension, sort of angling them you're not really going to get that effect. And it's much harder to do versus just using an adjustment layer and then just having that blur effect to a, a very specific part. It makes it a lot faster when you're animating these sort of videos. And it means that you can create lots of different blur effects for different parts of your animation rather than working in three dimensional space for everything. The other thing that I also added was added some texture. Now I did this by coming up here and added the grain effect. So I just basically added grain and these are the settings that I used here on screen. Now it's important that you come down to the animation settings and you drop this down to around sort of 0.5 or 0.6 because that's the speed at which the, you know, the grain effect is gonna play out. If you set that number much higher, you're gonna notice the grain is really going crazy. If you lower it right down, it's just gonna slow it down and just kind of add that texture without taking away from, you know, where you want your viewers to actually be looking on screen. This is the intensity settings here if you wanna follow along exactly, but it just kind of creates this nice sort of effect here if I zoom in. I mean, it might be a bit hard to see on the compression of this video on YouTube, but you can just kind of see, I can see it on my screen when you turn it on and off. Again, these are the sort of effects you want to leave to the very last stage because they do slow down your whole animation and render and everything. So you just want to make sure that you leave them on to the very last part. Now, if I go back to my original here and just play through what I've actually got, I added this blur, a slight fade effect for this blur. So if I hit T on that, I could just create a, you know, uh, an opacity keyframe to sort of scale it on and off or turn that effect on and off. The other thing I also did was created a new null. So you could create a new null object here. 
and then parent all of those layers to that null by just dragging this little pick whip across to that null. And with that, then you can just, if I hit you, I can bring up the scale keyframe and that's how I created that little scale effect. It just scales everything in together. It just makes it a lot easier to animate everything together. You don't need to set that for the noise and the blur function because they're overlays. So they're adjustment layers. They're gonna affect everything on the screen or underneath those layers. So you don't need to add it for them. The other things that I added were these little line effects, just to show you how I did those really quickly. I just basically grabbed my pen tool up here, made sure that I didn't have any uh, fill settings, added a slight stroke and just kind of drew out a line here, something like this, you can scale this up. Now at the moment it's pretty sort of solid. What you can do or what I did to mine is just added a rough and edges effect. Now if I just turn this off and just hide that, you can see that it kind of creates this, you know, sort of, it makes it look like it's been more like hand drawn rather than being, you know, a solid straight line. These are the exact settings here again, if you want to follow along and match to what I did there. And to that, I also came down here and added a trims path. So I talk a lot about trims path in my animation master course. If you've done that, you'll know all about and how useful that tool is. But if I just hit you, I can bring up those keyframes. I just created a end keyframe here and animated that line on. And that's essentially how I drew that little line across. So there was lots of things that we covered in this video. Hopefully you picked up a few tips and techniques and learned a few things along the way. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.